Hi, welcome back to my channel, Made on Maple Street. I'm Andrea, and I'm glad you're here. In today's video, I'm sharing six easy St. Patrick's Day DIY projects using mostly items from Dollar Tree. If you're a fan of quick and easy DIYs, I hope you'll consider subscribing so you don't miss a future video. For this first project, I started with an unfinished wooden pot of gold sign from Dollar Tree and some gold glitter coins that I picked up on sale at Hobby Lobby. I removed the jute hanger from the top of the sign and set it aside for later. I didn't like the placement of the word lucky, so I used my heat gun and a paint scraper to remove it from the pot. Removing the word left some dents in the wood, so I filled them in using a bit of wood filler. While waiting for the wood filler to dry, I moved on to the word lucky that I removed earlier. I started by adding a bit of paint to these little Dollar Tree cups. The colors were a bit brighter than I wanted them to be, so I added a few drops of white paint to each color and mixed them using the end of a paintbrush. Then it was time to paint. I started with red and painted vertical rainbow stripes along the entire length of the word. After the wood filler on the pot dried, I sanded off the rough edges using my sanding sponge. I gave the entire pot two coats of ink chalk paint from Waverly. Once all the paint was dry, I reattached the word to the pot using some hot glue. Next, I grabbed this pack of glitter cardstock from my stash and tore out a piece of gold paper. I traced around the gold at the top of the pot and cut the cardstock to fit. I attached the cardstock to the top of the pot using hot glue. Then I used my weeding tool to poke holes in the top and reattach the twine hanger. To finish it off, I attached the gold glitter coins to the top using hot glue. I could have just left the cardstock as is but I like the dimension that the coins added to the sign. This cute sign reminds me of a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. For this next DIY, I started with an unfinished wood crate from Dollar Tree and four wooden beads from Amazon. After removing the sticker from the bottom of the crate, I gave it a coat of antique Waverly wax from Walmart. I didn't worry too much about the inside since it was going to be filled with greenery later. I wiped the excess wax from the crate using a baby wipe and repeated the same process with the four wooden beads.
Once the crate was dry, I used a chip brush to apply a thin coat of plaster chalk paint. I wanted the crate to have a distressed finish, so I used very light strokes as I applied the paint around the outside of the box. I turned the crate upside down and added one bead to each corner using hot glue. For the inside of the crate, I started by gluing two pieces of floral foam to the bottom. I found a boxwood stem in my stash and cut it into smaller pieces using my wire cutter. I stuck the boxwood pieces into the floral foam until I was happy with the arrangement. Then I removed the glittery shamrocks from this decorative piece I picked up at Dollar Tree. I replaced the wires in the bottom of the shamrocks with bamboo skewers because I wanted the shamrocks to be a bit taller. I trimmed the bamboo skewers with my miter shears and placed the shamrocks into the floral foam. I grabbed this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and wrapped it around the center of the crate, attaching both ends to the back with hot glue. I thought it was missing something, so I wrapped some green and white berry garland from Hobby Lobby around the ribbon. That was the perfect finishing touch. I was having a hard time finding these crates in the Dollar Tree stores near my house, but thanks to a great friend, I now have an entire case. Be on the lookout for more crate DIYs in the future. I was looking for something to take up a relatively large space on the bottom of my tiered tray and came across this chalkboard in my stash. I removed the chalkboard from the base and gave the entire board two coats of plaster chalk paint from Waverly. Once the paint was dry, I cut the number 17 out of stencil vinyl using my Cricut. I placed the number down on my board using transfer tape. I gave the numbers a light coat of matte Mod Podge to prevent bleeding. While waiting for the Mod Podge to dry, I took out one of the smallest shamrocks from this pack I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I painted the front and sides using celery chalk paint and set the shamrock aside to dry. I gave the entire board two good coats of fern chalk paint. Once the paint dried, I used my weeding tool to remove the stencil number 17 from the chalkboard. I used a bit of plaster paint to touch up that little spot of green because it was driving me crazy. After placing the board back in the base, I attached the little shamrock using some hot glue and this simple project was finished. Do you like what you see so far? 
be sure to hit the thumbs up button to let me know. As soon as I saw this cloud tassel plaque at Dollar Tree, I knew it had to come home with me. I removed the sticker on the back of the cloud with the help of my heat gun. I find that stickers come off so much easier with a small blast of heat. I used my scissors to cut the tassel off the bottom of the cloud. I applied a bit of heat to the opening at the top of the cloud and with the help of a hard tug, the twine came right out. I gave the front and back of the cloud two coats of plaster chalk paint from Waverly. I grabbed six wooden beads from Amazon and used the same rainbow paints from earlier to give each bead a coat of paint. While the paint was drying, I cut out somewhere over the rainbow on gold shimmery vinyl using my Cricut. Then I applied the text to the cloud. I put a generous amount of hot glue in the hole at the top of the cloud and stuck a piece of twine inside the hole. Then I strung the colorful beads on the twine, placing a smaller unfinished bead between each color. I tied the twine in a knot at the top to finish it off. I just love this fun little strand of beads. For this project, I started with an unfinished wood frame that I found in the checkout line at Michael's. First, I removed the twine hanger and staples from the back of the sign. I gave the frame and back of the sign a coat of antique wax. I didn't worry about the inside of the frame because I knew it would be covered up later. I wiped away the excess wax using a baby wipe. I wanted the sign to have a green background, so I flipped through this pad of paper and found a sheet that I liked. After removing the sheet from the pad, I used my paper trimmer to cut it to the size of the opening. Using a glue stick, I applied a generous amount of glue to the inside of the frame and placed my paper on top of the glue, applying a lot of pressure to ensure a good hold. Next, I got one pot out of the set of five from Dollar Tree. I used my craft knife to cut the pot in half. I used hot glue to adhere several gold glitter coins to the inside of the pot so they were sticking out of the top. To finish this project, I applied hot glue to the back edge of the pot and placed it on my sign. One of the gold coins was a little too low, so I used my weeding tool to move it up a bit. I love how this sign added a bit of sparkle to my tiered tray. This last project was inspired by something I saw on Pinterest. For the base, I used an unfinished wood shamrock from Dollar Tree and a handful of jumbo craft sticks from Walmart. I prepared the craft sticks by cutting off the rounded edges using my miter shears. I used my sanding block to smooth out the rough edges. I gave the front and sides of the shamrock and all of the craft sticks a coat of antique wax by Waverly. I wiped away the excess using a baby wipe.
Next, I grabbed celery, fern, and moss paint from Waverly. I divided the craft sticks into groups of four or five and painted each group with a different shade of green. I wanted them to be distressed, so I didn't cover them completely. I also painted a few of the sticks in the color plaster for a bit more variety. Once the sticks dried, I randomly placed them on the shamrock, ensuring that the colors were dispersed evenly. When I was satisfied with the arrangement, I adhered the sticks to the shamrock using hot glue. After gluing all of the sticks, I turned the shamrock over to the back and used my craft knife to remove the pieces that were hanging over the edge. I removed the rough edges using my sanding block. I felt like some of the craft sticks were a bit too bright, so I used my sanding block to distress them a bit. After reattaching the twine hanger using hot glue, this rustic shamrock was complete. I hung it on an antique window screen in my entryway and I think they complement each other very well. That wraps up today's video. I'm curious to know, which DIY was your favorite? Stay tuned for more quick and easy DIYs. Thanks for watching.